G'day folks, how are you going? Today it's Photoshop Friday again, and uh, today I wanna to show you how to vignette an image. So look, I love vignetting an image. It really, really just adds that final little zing that makes your image just jump out. Um, it'll, it'll draw the viewer into your subject, and it's just an awesome thing to add right at the end of your editing. So I'm gonna be doing it in Photoshop, uh, there's a few different ways you can do it, but I reckon this is the best way that I have found. It's pretty quick and easy, and you can, you know, once you've got it done, you can set up as an action. So it's just one click, a couple of little adjustments, and you're done. Anyway, look, I've got an image up on the screen now. Let's get into it, and let me show you how to vignette an image. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that I use vignettes on my images. I really love vignettes. So most of my images will have one applied. I think it just really is that final little touch that helps drag you into the middle of the image and, and really show off um, your subject. Now, as I said, there's two different styles that I use. Let me just start with the first one. Um, actually, before I start with the first one, there's just one other thing I wanna say is, uh, a vignette needs to be part of your workflow and you need to know where it is in that workflow. So I always do my vignette last and I'll look at an image as I'm editing it, normally at the start of the image and I'll, as I start editing I will say to myself, am I going to be adding a vignette to this at the end or not? If I'm not, then I will edit accordingly and if I say yes, I want to add a vignette at the end, then I will also edit accordingly. As in, uh, I will take into consideration how, how much I darken the top and the bottom of the image, knowing that I'm going to add that at the end. So you don't want to darken the sky to bilio and darken the foreground to bilio and then add uh, a vignette because it's going to darken it even more. So you need to be fairly subtle in those areas before you do that. So you can see on this image, um, during the editing process, I've darkened the sky down a little bit and I've darkened the foreground a little bit and this vignette will just add a, a fraction more to it. Okay, so now as I said earlier, there is, uh, there's two different styles that I use and it, the two different styles come down to the type of selection that I make. So if we go to our toolbar here, this is our selection tool. I want you to select the, the marquee tool, which is M on the short. Uh, M is a shortcut on the keyboard. Now if you click and just drag out, then I want you to, just to start with the elliptical tool, that's the round one. Now if we go up to the top of our toolbar along here, we need this one here selected, which it should be selected by default. That's in, uh, telling it that we're going to make a new selection. This is add to selection, subtract and intersect. Now, for this one, this is the important bit here too. We want to add some feathering to the selection that we're going to make. So, I know from practice that I like 350 pixels per inch. That suits the size of my files. You may need to have a little play around with that. So, start somewhere around 300, between 300 and 400, and then work out your happy medium. This should be ticked. That just helps smooth things out and the style we want normal. Normal means that we can, uh, we can drag and select, make our selection freehand. We're not uh, bound to a fixed ratio or a fixed size. Right, so come over to your picture. It, I want you to imagine a circle or an oval drawn around here. And that is gonna be the selection that we will make and then everything outside of that is gonna be darkened. So I start over in this top left hand corner, just click and drag across to roughly the width that you want and then come down and make the height. Let's just make a little bit smaller actually this one. So I reckon around about there. Now once you've made that selection, you can just click on it and just drag it around and place it where you want. So these little pink lines come up telling me that that's perfectly centered. Let's leave it there. Now it's not 
um, or you, you can make this bigger and smaller if you've totally mucked up and just delete it and start again so command D on the keyboard will delete a selection and then you can just drag and draw it again if I looked at this and said oh yeah look it's a little bit too big then we can come up here to select go to modify and the two that we would use would be expand to make it bigger or contract to make it smaller so I'm actually going to just expand it to show you how this works and we'll just go 50 pixels because I reckon it can be a little bit bigger than that and that's made that selection a fraction bigger okay so we've made our selection we've got feathering applied of 350 pixels per inch so if you can imagine this is feathered on this line now we want to right click on this and go select inverse the other way you can do that is to come up here to select and go inverse so what that has done now is it has selected the outside and this is the bit that's going to be darkened so now we've made our selection uh, and we've just got feathering on the inside here of 350 pixels per inch so we want to cut that out as a new layer so we do that by command or apple j so the layers palette is up here we can see that that has now been uh, cut out as a new layer if your layers palette is not up then just go to window and that's layers okay so that's disappeared there so to make it reappear okay there we go if I turn the bottom layer off you can see exactly what we've got so we're going to have all this area here will be darkened and it's feathering off in the middle so that we don't know the transition so much now to darken this uh, what I do is I just change the blend mode to multiply so I change that to multiply it has now darkened all the dark tones and it leaves the lighter tones alone now as you can see that's a little bit extreme so what we do is because it's on a layer we come up here to opacity and we just play with the opacity to get it to exactly where we want normally I will pull mine back to anywhere from 15% uh, through to sort of 30% so I reckon that looks quite good there we can just turn this little eyeball on and off so we can preview that layer yep I reckon that looks pretty nice so it's just a nice subtle vignette it's not too extreme but it just really helps pull the viewer into the lighter part of the image here Right, so that's one way so as you can see that is darkening uh, we can't see it very well when it's uh, hang on, we'll just pull that opacity back up so it darkens the sides as well so I'm going to show you another way of doing it where we only darken the top and the bottom because sometimes I'll want to do a vignette but I only want to darken the top and the bottom I don't want to darken anything on the sides here so to do that we go back we use the marquee tool but we use the rectangular mar marquee tool so that's the square one and now when we change that it'll turn the feathering off so we actually want the feathering set to zero on this one now we come in and we make a square selection or a rectangle selection and we want to start and finish um, where our vignetting sort of finishes up here and where it starts down here so we just start on the you need to start on the side click across the full width of the picture and then come down make sure you are the full width and just make a box let's just say roughly there now don't forget I can move that box up and down to get it where I want I reckon there is about right so I need to inverse this by inversing this I'll be then selecting the top and the bottom bit so select inverse i now have the top and bottom uh, now oh yeah no that's okay yep it's gone right out to the sides so now what i want to do is i only want to feather this edge here okay if i just applied normal feathering it applies it right around every edge but i don't want these three edges here feathered i only want this edge feathered and on this bottom box only want this edge feathered I don't want these three here 
So to do that, we just come up to the top here. The quickest way is hit select and mask. Now, yours may not look like this. It normally defaults to maybe onion skin or something else. Okay, I find the best way is this one here on layers. So we can see what's happening. Now, we want to just leave everything uh, set to default where it is and just change the feathering. We can just type in here 350 and we get an idea of what's going on here. I think that needs to be a little bit smaller. 325, go OK. And then we cut that out as a layer again, Command J. Now I've just turned that bottom layer off to show you. So see how that's only feathered on, on this, this edge here and this edge here. Just turn the bottom layer back on. Same as last time, we go to multiply and then bring our opacity back to sort of 25, 30%. If we turn that on and off, I'll just make that a bit stronger so you can see exactly where it is. But that is now just darkening the top of the image and the bottom of the image. Now there's, there's other ways, you can take this another step further and I'll show you this in another video, but I could add a mask to this and mask some out if, if I want to mask little areas out to really fine tune it. But generally I don't, I just apply a subtle vignette top and bottom or do the circular one and uh, Bob's your uncle. So there you go, that is how you, uh, how you vignette an image. Um, hope you found that useful. I think the key is to keep it subtle. Don't go overboard, just keep it nice and soft so people don't really know that you've applied it. But it, will, uh, it can really just add that last little zing to your picture. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one. Ciao.